Good morning, Grizzlies. It's uh, Tuesday, the 31st of March. Um, this begins our third week of uh, shelter in place and not being able to go to school. Um, and I want to just continue with our discussion of uh, tracking coronavirus using exponential modeling. Is there anybody here who can uh, remind me um, where were we and what do these numbers mean? Gabriel, G Gabriel Paganini, okay? Yeah, um, so Gabriel said, yep. Yeah. Basically, we were using um, a start value of 155 from Italy, uh, taking up to 35,713 over the course of 24 days, which showed us a B value, which is a constant growth value of approximately 1.25, meaning 25% daily growth. Uh, that is extremely sharp. Um, we were able to model that in a standard exponential model. Um, and show that this was the model for uh, Italy, which was a pretty steep curve. Um, at the same time, we did the same thing with the USA. We showed that the USA started with a very similar start value, 159 as compared to 155 for Italy, got up to 33,546, which is very similar to Italy, um, and did it in only 17 days, which showed a daily growth value of 1.37. Now, just a little uh, caveat. Some of the data that we're going to see um, today, they're not going to match up perfectly. They're going to match up very closely, but not perfectly. And that's just because in some cases they're pulled from different sources. Okay. Um, but with the United States, we saw 1.37, which was a far steeper curve. So let's take another look at what that looks like. I'm going to look in here and as you can see they're basically reaching the same height approximately the same height but in much different time frame um, as I activate first the Italy trend line whoopsie first the Italy trend line and then the USA trend line you'll notice a couple things First of all, yes, the USA one is substantially sharper, but it's also far better aligned to the data set, which suggests to me that probably the USA was following this trend line as of the, the date, which I believe was, uh, was the 21st. Let me be sure about that. Uh, the 22nd of March. As of the 22nd of March, the USA is really following that 1.37, 37% daily growth. Whereas Italy, basically, the actual data is showing that it's less pronounced than the 25. So not only do we have a substantially worse trend line in the United States, but we're actually mar uh, matching it much more closely, meaning that Italy is starting to flatten the curve. And as of March 22nd, we had yet to flatten the curve. Okay, so um, can anyone share some of the limitations of this kind of modeling? China, awesome. China, so yeah, you're saying like basically we have limitations as to data, like if, if the data we have is a little bit uh, underreported, that's a problem. If there's testing problems, if we don't have enough tests out there, we, we wouldn't know. Um, that's true. Um, what about what about making predictions into the future? Right. Again, exactly. As as uh, more people shelter in place, we're going to see that the lines are going to level off. Also, you know, worst case scenario, even if the even if um, people continue to mix as they have been, um, the number of people left to be infected, to possibly become infected, gets gets lowered, and therefore, yeah, it won't continue up this way forever. Um, all right, so does anyone want to make uh, any predictions about how things will, will happen? Because in a way, we're sort of living in the future as uh, compared to this stuff, this data. Do you think, do you think we've been able to flatten the curve some? Anybody? Kethia. Kethia says, yeah, there's no way we're going to keep up with that. All right. Well, I just so happen to have a 
more up-to-date data table. So as you can see, we have our last time and our last time, and then we have um, new data. Uh, one of the reasons why there's more uh, in the Italian one is that our actual last one had uh, a few projected data. So actually it was here, but these ones ended up being almost exactly as predicted. Um, so we're gonna continue to enter this data and we're going to track to see how well they, uh, they go along with our, our lines and we'll see how, that, how uh, we might have to adjust our models. All right, so I'm gonna deselect these um, and now we're gonna to start to enter data for Italy. It's gonna take me a bit. We got 41035. 25, 26, 7, 28, 9, 30, 31, 32, 1, 5. Might want to just um, pause it. Okay. So here we are. We've, we've entered all these data. Um, and you can look at the, the, the plots. The USA is really outpacing Italy, and um, you know that doesn't really feel like it bodes well. Um, I'm gonna adjust the graph because the highest number we see, uh, I think the highest number we end up seeing is 140,000. So yeah, if, if you're recalling last week, the highest numbers we saw was 35,000. So it's now four times as many people since the last time that we looked. Um, and we're gonna go to, uh, we'll go to day 30 for now. Actually, I think we need to go to day 37 for Italy. And we need to go, um, I'll make space for 150,000 right now. All right, so let's notice some things. I like, if I'm Italian, I like this. Just look at that. Do you see what's happening there? Yeah, it's still going up. It's true, it's true, it's still going up. And I guess, I guess what I would say is, yeah, Kaylin Weir, what do you, what do you think about this? Kaylin? yeah, basically it's going up, but it's going up slower. So you'd say like the slope is decreasing. You know, from an algebra perspective, the slope is decreasing, which means that you can kind of almost predict the top of the curve there. That's really encouraging. Um, Kaylin, do you think that the Italian curve that we did before with the 1.25 growth rate is going to stay in effect? Let's take a look. No, in fact, they're doing much better than the 1.25. They're, they're doing much better. Um, is that good news? Kyle? Yeah, Kyle. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it seems like it's good news. All right. Um, let's look at the USA and see, are we still tracking? This is the big one. Um, are we still tracking with this? Are we starting to hopefully get a little bit below the trend line of the 1.37, 37% growth rate. Aha, hey, just that amount of separation, it's positive. Uh, it, it, it means you can no longer say that we're growing at a 37% rate because you know even that small amount of separation, I want you to realize if we were at 37%, we wouldn't be at 140,000. We'd be way up at almost 300,000. It's amazing what looks like a small difference is a profound difference over time. Again, you see here we are, day 24. We're just over 140,000 cases. But if we had maintained that 37% growth rate, we'd be at roughly 300,000. I'm going to say slightly over 300,000 cases if, if we'd maintain that growth rate. Um, 
Okay, so um, Josh is saying that maybe we need to um, revisit our model. And I think that's true. I mean, our model was really good up until about here. So does anybody have any idea how we might do this? Serenity. Serenity, yeah. Serenity says piecewise. I think, yeah, we can do it kind of piecewise. So let's, let's see what, what we might mean by doing it piecewise. Let's say that this model for the USA was really good up until day 17. All right, be right back and I get one of my markers. So up until day 17, we're like basically tracking this. So we can go in here and say, you know what? X less than or equal to 17. Uh, it's really not showing up well. X is less than or equal to 17. All right, so our new model can be based on uh, the data over a certain interval of time. Um, we've got basically, we'll say from here to here, we can say, well, how many days is this? If we consider that the, the new day zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So what we can do is basically reuse this model, but now we're gonna treat 33,546 as the A value. Again, the B value is unknown, but it's only to the seventh power, but we end up with 140, 904. And this will help us figure out basically what's going on with us um, uh, over the last week. Um, it's not going to be a 37% growth rate. All right, so let's come back on to Desmos. i deselect everything. I'm gonna home button this son of a gun. Hello. And we're just gonna use this to figure out basically what our more updated growth rate is. So. I'm gonna say we got 140,904, which is a big number. And I don't wanna take away from that. But I don't know, I, I still, generally I think that this is a little bit cause for optimism. All right, so just as before, we're gonna look in on this number and we're gonna see that, yeah, we have a new growth rate. Hey, look at that. This is 1.3. This is 1.25. I'm going to say it's 1.23. I'm going to say it's 1.23. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say Y is equal to uh, 33,546 in blue, of course, times 1.23. to the um, x, oh, sorry, <laughs> what am I doing? To the power of x, and let's get back to this. Let's, uh, again, we'll go, uh, you know, it's a little time consuming. We'll go up to 800,000, three, Hundred thousand um, from day zero to day thirty. All right. Now, why is this incorrect? Well, we have to adjust the x value because we started on day seventeen. So, just think about translations. If I want to move to the right, do I do minus or plus? Because I have to shift this entire thing so it falls in line. I believe it's going to be minus. Oopsie, <laughs> make sure it's, hmm. Let's try this again. X minus 17, huh. Maybe parentheses? Aha, there it is, aha. 
And that got us something that fits our trend line a lot better. So that it may not be perfect. And of course, it really only comes in to play when the x value is greater than or equal to 17. So at this point, we can say that it's kind of the union of these two functions. And yeah, we've got some, you know, halfway decent piecewise modeling going on here. All right. So let's, uh, let's kind of sum up a little bit what we've, what we've got to here. Um, I like that we were able to kind of recognize that the graph changes and maybe we just break it into pieces for some piecewise modeling. Uh, does anybody have any creative ideas of how to deal with this? Um, Kaylin Campbell? Yeah, maybe like once a week. Once a week, a new piece. So each piece is basically seven X values long. And then you could just constrain it. Uh, remember that you have to translate um, by doing X minus as an exponent. So X minus whatever day one is in your model, and that will always work. Okay, so um, let's talk a little bit of a uh, little bit of big picture. Um, Katie, what do you notice? Yeah, yeah. Um, we can probably use that same idea, that same concept, to model Italy forward. And what we're going to notice is that, yeah, you're going to predict perhaps a peak, an actual peak. I mean, you can even see the trend of maybe around day 40. Italy, Italy might get to their highest point. I think it's too soon to see with us. Uh, the word would be inflection point. It's too soon to see with us. We might want to say that it's going to be like this. That would feel cool. But um, it's not really where our trend line is heading. Uh, so deviations from the trend line, I've been looking this up a lot. Uh, it's very hard to predict. You, you know you're there when you're there. We're going to look for a pattern of multiple days of trending in this direction instead of upwards. And um, at that point, we'll know that we're good. Um, it is also neat, if you notice very closely here, zoom in, that since most of these data points are above the line, it means the line itself is actually too steep. That at one point it was 1.23, but it's getting less. Um, there are, of course, um, there are, of course, uh, lots of factors still, test rate, uh, test availability, data lag, all of that. Um, there's even the fact that people who are symptomatic are not going to the hospital if they do not think that they have it that badly. It's really something to consider. Um, does anybody want to talk about the mathematics and like a big picture of, of how to describe this? June. Yeah. June, June says... Um, Getting better doesn't just mean the number's going down. It means they're still going up, but they're going up at a slower rate. And we need to look for that. Um, personally, when I look at a lot of the data that I see online, they'll just give you the raw data, a number. And I would say that the number is not nearly as important as how the number is moving, if that makes sense. In other words, um, if you're in a place where there's only a few cases, you know, certain states, they're... they're still fewer than 100 cases, but how are they moving? We want to keep a, an eye on that. Uh, there's data coming out now that says that actually the state with the lowest rate of growth is Washington State, the state that had the first infections. So whereas Washington has a very, very serious outbreak right now, they're closer to the end of their curve, whereas others are just starting. So there's a lot of lag. Ron? Ron, can you pay attention, please? Oh. Oh. Good model, Ron. Just keep doing what you're doing. Awesome. All right. Um, um, Eric. Yeah, really good point. Eric said, 
Um, by the way, good word. Eric said uh, the USA is not monolithic. It means that even though we're looking at an entire nation's worth of data, this is really a collection of a lot of different places. And some of them are low numbers, but shooting up very quickly. Others are high numbers, but starting to level out. Um, New York, Washington, and I think California are starting to really level out. I've got some stuff to look at here that will, um, in my estimation, be really useful for us to think about. If with any luck I can get to my other, oh, no, there. I don't want you there right now. Oh my gosh. I don't need to narrate this. Okay, yeah. so we're gonna look at uh, some data. Um, this is the US. I, I'm getting this from uh, the CDC. Um, this is a great website and it has a daily tracker. So this is where I got my data from. As you can see, that really does look like an exponential curve. Um, you know, there's data all the way back here, but the data, see, there's numbers. They're so, so low. And that means that, you know, just having low numbers is no guarantee of anything, okay? What we really want is to flatten that curve. Um, I've also got my Italy data. Uh, this comes from Potenzione Civile. And you can see the, the growth rate. I love that they actually show a daily growth rate. And see, even though the numbers get bigger, the growth rate gets lower. That's what we care about, okay. Um, I'm not finding everything I'm looking for, but it is interesting to see um, in the state of California. Um, we're noticing that the number of new cases, it is definitely trending upwards. Um, as you can see, this is the, the trend line for California. Um, 7,454 confirmed. Now, this is the kind of thing we see a lot. We see a, a raw number. But again, what I care about more is how is it moving. Um, let's look at this. This is more interesting to me, although I really wish I had a data table. But you see this orange line here. This is California. And we've got, we've got South Korea here, which is considered the country that's dealt with it the best. And you can see that even though they had quite a few cases, they really, really flattened the curve quickly. Um, over here we have Spain, and Spain's really going through a tough time. It's, it's more to do with just how steep that curve is, right? Um, so the good news is that California doesn't quite resemble South Korea, but it does resemble a better flattening of the curve than a lot of other places. So you know what? That's something to celebrate. I hope you all feel you know, a little bit of a positive um, response. Here's California compared to other states. Um, mostly we see, you know, Washington, like I said, Washington was the first one to have it bad. And, you know, that truth be told, Washington state has had it really bad, but they flattened their curve significantly. And that's really important. We're gonna see that Georgia is close to us, very similar. Louisiana's had it really bad, a big spike apparently from Mardi Gras. Um, and then we're over here at Michigan and New York who are really spiking right now. Um, so, you know, back to Eric's point, uh, the United States is not monolithic. It's, uh, it, depends on, um, it depends on where you are. Um, now, unfortunately, um, I have had less luck getting clear data about what's happening around here. Um, to be very particular, the uh, Kaiser that's near, uh, not too far from Gunderson on Santa Teresa Avenue, um, has just released um, information that about half the patients in the hospital have, uh, have um, uh, COVID infections. Um, that's, that's concerning. Um, on the other hand, the overall numbers in Santa Clara County, um, they, they're, not, they're not trending up super fast, although we have all kinds of issues with data lag and testing. So it, it's hard to say for sure. Um, this is a developing story, and I want you to understand that. Um, but in addition, I want you to play with things like piecewise models. 
So for today's assignment, what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to take the Italy data that we have and try to make a best case piecewise model. Um, I'll give you um, I'll give you an entire data table for Italy. What I would like you to do is basically go piecewise, maybe every five or seven days, a different exponential curve. And what you're going to find is that eventually you're getting very close to zero growth rate. And that's fantastic. That's really where we want to be. Okay, everybody, um, have a great day. And uh, I'll, I'll talk to you on uh, Zoom soon.